How's it going, everybody? Welcome in to another episode of the Mavs Step Back Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Trigg. Man, what a season it has been for the Mavs this year. Uh, it is coming to a close. I know there's still technically uh, two games left on the schedule. They play tonight, which is Friday night. Uh, fan Appreciation Night at American Airlines Center against the Detroit Pistons. And then they finish up on Sunday in Oklahoma City in a game that may or may not have uh, anything to play for. Well, I mean, there won't be anything to play for on the Mavs side, probably. We'll just have to see how it goes. Uh, But, you know, the OKC Thunder, they might have something to play for as well. We just have to see. Looking at the standings, the Mavs can finish no lower than fifth. And they're already locked into a first-round matchup with the Los Angeles Clippers. For the third time in five years, we are getting Mavs Clippers. Should be extremely exciting. Tons of star power. Now, obviously, you know, the Clippers star power is more on the aging end uh, than the Mavs have. But, you know, still, it's it's Kawhi Leonard. It's Paul George. uh, It's James Harden, Russell Westbrook. You know, they've got good guys, good players on the roster. So uh, it's not going to be easy even though I do think the Mavs can handle uh, the Clippers in, you know, probably five or six games if they come out and take it seriously. Obviously, Kawhi Leonard's health is something to keep an eye on. He's missed, I think, the last eight games for the Clippers with what the team is calling uh, knee inflammation. And you know how stuff with Kawhi Leonard goes in the uh, injury department. You know, he doesn't really let much information out. I don't even think the Clippers really know to the extent, you know, what he's uh, what he's dealing with with this knee inflammation. So uh, some people think he's just resting up for the postseason. Some people think it could be a more serious issue with Kawhi and his knee. We'll see. It could be it could be either one. All I know is that, you know, if he's just resting up for the postseason and there's no issues with his knee, then you'd think he'd want to get some reps in. Uh, before the postseason gets here. Otherwise, it's going to be like two, three weeks that he hasn't played uh, just rolling into a playoff series. So we'll see how that goes for the Clippers. Uh, I think the Mavs can beat the Clippers either way, but obviously if Kawhi isn't 100% or if he doesn't play a couple games to start the series uh, or play the series at all, that obviously changes things and it changes expectations far as you know how many games we think the Mavs should win in so uh we'll see how it goes but Luca Kyrie Irving Daniel Gafford PJ Washington you got you know Derek Jones Jr. Dante Exum Josh Green is back Derek Lively will be back for the postseason uh you know I just think the Mavs have so much more than they did in previous matchups that this should should not be a problem for them um in this first round series. But again, you know, a lot of it depends on Kawhi because if he's fully healthy going into this series, we know what a fully healthy Kawhi Leonard is capable of. So uh, very interesting. We're going to dive more into uh, the Mavs versus the Clippers probably Tuesday of next week because there's, there's going to be a lot of downtime since the Mavs didn't make the play in tournament. They pretty much get a full week off before the playoffs start next weekend. Uh, And I'm going to have my guy, uh, Drew Johnson, on here, and we're going to dissect every aspect of this Mavs Clippers series and give our predictions for what we think will happen. And we should know more, you know, injury-wise by that time next week as well. But uh, so the Mavs, they're coming off a Eastern Conference back-to-back uh, two game road trip, and you know, they blew out the Hornets on Tuesday night, took care of business. You know, the, the <laughs> what some people thought would might be the Grant Williams revenge game, it wasn't. Um, uh, you know, the Mavs took care of business, won by 26 in Charlotte, 130 to 104. And then on the second night of a back to back, they went and played in Miami. And to me, this was the true dress rehearsal for the postseason for the Mavs, you know, because Kyrie's not going to play against the Detroit Pistons 
Luca might not play, but we'll see. I, I think he will end up playing just a little bit. Um, but, you know, I, I think this Miami game was the true dress rehearsal because they came out on out of a back-to-back, and given Miami was on the second night of a back-to-back too, but over the last handful of games, like 10 games, really stretches back to 18 games for the Mavs. They've had the number one offense in the league. But, you know, over the last 10 game span, obviously the Mavs have had the number one defense. Well, the Heat, they had the number two defense in the league. Uh, and the Mavs came out there on the second night of a back to back in Miami and beat the Miami Heat 111 to 92. Uh, just complete dominance uh, from start to finish. They did have a little bit of a lapse there in the third quarter. They lost the third quarter by eight. And that was mainly because Kevin Love just starting started hitting shots like he was prime Kevin Love. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the the Heat never got back to within. I think 11 was probably the, the most they creeped back. Uh, I'm sorry, seven points was the most they creeped back, closest they creeped back in that fourth quarter. And then the Mavs slammed the door on the Heat uh, going down the stretch there. And the box score was something to behold. Like, scoring was distributed so nicely uh, for this game. So out of, you know, 111 points, Luka did his thing. He had 29 points, almost had a triple-double, 29 points, nine rebounds, nine assists. Kyrie had 25 points, and 21 of those points came in the first half. He was just cooking Miami. He looked like he was very much ready uh, for the postseason. So playoff Luka, playoff Kai. Uh, the first time we'll get to see that that duo together in the postseason. Super excited for it. Chemistry is at an all time high. The guys are just playing great basketball. So, you know, you have your your superstars leading the way there. Twenty nine from Luca, twenty five from Kai. You have Daniel Gafford, Derek Jones Jr., and PJ Washington all scoring twelve points apiece. <laughs> uh, they all scored twelve points apiece. Gafford had five rebounds three assists, a steal, and three blocks. Derrick Jones Jr. had two steals and two blocks. P.J. Washington had six rebounds, two assists, two steals, and a block. Just lots of steals, lots of blocks, lots of defense. This team is locked in uh, and playing just amazing as a unit defensively. And then, you know, off the bench, Maxi Kleba, uh, he has been great lately. He only hit one shot. He only had four points, but you know his defense has been on point. He was a plus 13 and 20 minutes off the bench. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., despite shooting two of eight from the field and one of six from three, uh, he was still a plus 16 and 18 minutes off the bench. Josh Green came back, and you know he didn't shoot very well, just one of five overall, but he had four rebounds, two assists, and a steal. He was plus seven in his 14 minutes. Uh, Dante Exum, only three points in 19 minutes. But again, you know, he did a little bit of something else, had three bounds, two assists, and was a plus 10 in those 19 minutes. So across the board, you know, there was there was a little bit of scoring from everybody, even if it wasn't a lot in certain spots. You know, Omax Prosper even got in the game there at the end and showed off his uh, improved jump shot and got a dunk thrown in there, had four points in just his two minutes. Uh, Looked pretty good. Everybody in this game was a plus in the box score, plus minus, except for Derrick Jones Jr., and he was only a a negative one. So that just goes to show you how dominant of an effort this was from the Mavs in Miami. They came with a certain level of seriousness and, you know, really wanting to finish off that road back-to-back in a good way. And sure enough, they did. I mean, it was incredible. So they get the 111-92 win, uh, which clinched a couple of things. It clinched their fifth uh, division title in franchise history. Uh, They won the Southwest Division this year. Uh, It clinched a 50-win season. Mavs are now 50-30 and going into Friday night's game against the Detroit Pistons. Uh, Kyrie Irving had some incentive to play. Because if the Mavs won 50 games and if Kyrie Irving played in at least 58 games this season, he got an extra $1 million, you know, due to the terms of his contract. And he did that. That was his 58th game. Uh, The Mavs won 50 games in that 58th game. 
And so he gets an extra $1 million and a much deserved uh, rest game against the Detroit Pistons uh, tonight. So uh, that's, that's where we're at with that. Oh yeah. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, that also clinched the Mavs into that fifth spot with a slim chance of potentially moving up to uh, the four seed. Now, for that to happen, the Mavs have to win these last two games against the Pistons and the Thunder, and the Clippers, they have to lose their last two games. And like I said, Kawhi Leonard has been out. But let me see what's on the Clippers' schedule for these last two games for them. Okay, so... Tonight they play uh, the Utah Jazz at home, and then they finish up against the Houston Rockets on Sunday. So tonight, in my opinion, will be key because I feel like if, if Utah can find a way to beat the Clippers tonight, then there is a real chance that the Mavs could end up with home court advantage uh, Sunday because I feel like the Rockets can definitely beat the Clippers without Kawhi Leonard. Uh, so I think it comes down to tonight. We'll see if the Jazz, who have just been tanking so hard, <laughs> just extremely hard tanking from uh, <laughs> from the Utah Jazz. I think they've lost. Let me get back to the standings here. I think, let's see, Utah has lost. Okay, they had lost 13 games in a row until they beat Houston in in their previous game. So. Uh, the Jazz on a one-game winning streak going into this matchup with uh, the Clippers. So uh, I think even without Kyrie tonight and possibly without Luka, we'll see if Luka ends up playing. But, you know, it's fan appreciation night, so I feel like he'll at least play maybe in the first half uh, before sitting. But, you know, I, I, I think that the Mavs should beat the Pistons tonight regardless, and then we'll see how that – Clippers jazz game because uh, you know then home court advantage comes down to the final day of the season and you know uh, Oklahoma City is tied with the Minnesota Timberwolves uh, for the two seed right now so they might have something to play for in that last game too uh, if they want to be second or third in the west so we'll just have to see how it goes but uh, before I get into the Luka MVP stuff which, you know, has blown up and it seems like it's been an argument every single day on on not just math Twitter, but NBA Twitter in general over the last few weeks. Uh, I do want to tell you about the number one daily fantasy sports app that you can get, and that's Prize Picks. Uh, be sure to go get that app if you enjoy daily fantasy sports, if you want an easy and fun experience picking the – higher and lower on points, rebounds, assists for all your favorite players. You know, Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving. Uh, you can pick it for, you know, any any team. It doesn't have to be the Mavs. If you want to, you know, go and look at the props for the Lakers and LeBron James or the Warriors, Steph Curry, whatever you want to do, go on there. Makes it easy. Just download the app, the Prize Picks app, and use our code STEPBACK to get up to $100 matched on your first deposit. So, for example, if you want to deposit $100 for your first deposit and use our promo code STEPBACK, you'll have $200 in your account to play with. So, uh, be sure to take advantage of that offer and uh, let us know what your picks are. You know, if you screenshot your picks and, you know, reply to the tweet when we publish this episode and let us know uh, what you're banking on. Now, obviously tonight, I mean, I, I think I'm going to stay away from Mavs Pistons just because <laughs> just because Kyrie's not playing. We don't know the, the full situation with Luka, how long he's going to play. It's kind of hard to, uh, to do the daily fantasy sports stuff on games like that uh, where, you know, there's different variables. You don't know how long the guys are playing. But uh, with the postseason coming up, there's going to be a lot of opportunity uh, to, you know, test your basketball knowledge with prize picks. So be sure to do that. And again, use our promo code step back to get up to a hundred dollars matched on your first deposit. Okay. MVP stuff. Y'all look, I am for Luca winning MVP. I have been one of his biggest supporters. I could be a professional Luca MVP 
campaign manager if they wanted me to be. I think he deserves it. I think the numbers he's putting up, you know, nearly averaging a 34-point triple-double, something no other player in NBA history has ever done, uh, is something that should be rewarded. And I look, I get it. Nikola Jokic is amazing. Like I'm I'm not gonna be upset if Jokic ends up winning MVP. But I do think given the overall numbers and the stuff that the Mavs have had to overcome this year as a team, because Luke has played in 70 games so far this year. He's only missed like 10 games, I think. Yeah, that's right. He's only missed 10 games. He's helped the Mavs navigate through so much. Kyrie Irving missing 12 games to a, a I believe it was a foot contusion or, or, or a heel contusion or something like that. It was the game they played in Portland and Dwight Powell just airdropped onto his foot <laughs> while he was on the ground. Very unfortunate, missed 12 games. And then, you know, later on in, at, at the end of last year, Pretty much the whole month of December, Kyrie missed due to a thumb sprain. Uh, and then you had you've had other injuries throughout the year. Josh Green, um, you had the the trade stuff. You know, instead of Grant Williams and Seth Curry being involved, or maybe Rashawn Holmes on some nights, the trade happened. And then you bring in Daniel Gafford, PJ Washington, uh, which obviously they hit the ground running. But then you had a little stretch in there where they. They hit a, a rough patch and had to figure some stuff out, and they did eventually figure it out. But all that stuff, all the injuries that the Mavs have had to navigate through, Dante Exum was out for a long amount of time, uh, paired with trying to integrate the new pieces, uh, not having the same lineup consistency uh, that teams like OKC and Denver have had. I think all of that should support a Luka Doncic MVP case. And I think he's had, he's got a good shot. You know, he's he's got a good he's got a good case and he's got a good shot in my opinion. Obviously Vegas doesn't think that. They think that Jokic is going to run away with it. I'm fine with that. I don't think we should spend too much time arguing with people over that and being upset that Luka's probably not going to win MVP even though we think he's deserving of it. Because I don't think that's going to be a bad thing for the Mavs in the long run, honestly. I mean, with the way this team is playing, they've won 16 out of their last 18 games. Should be 17 out of 19 if they take care of uh, business against the Pistons. But going into the postseason, there's already a lot of motivation. One is the Clippers, the team that has beaten Luka in two previous years in 2020 in 2021, the first series was in the bubble, went six games. Luca had that crazy uh, step back three to win game four and tie the series at two games apiece. Christos Porzingis got hurt, tore his meniscus uh, during game three and didn't come back after that. And then you had that next year where Porzingis and Jalen Brunson, and Brunson didn't play in the first series against the Clippers but he did in the second series. But neither Porzingis or Brunson were a factor in that second series. And, you know, you had <laughs> you had Boban Marjanovic playing, uh, starting at center in game seven of that second series they played against each other in 2021. A little bit different this time around. Uh, you know, Boban, Boban's not going to be starting at center uh, against the Clippers this time. So the Clippers, uh, their main guys are much older. Now, they do have proven star talent, even though it's older star talent. You know, they have James Harden and Russell Westbrook, but, you know, those guys haven't really been playoff risers through the course of their career as far as, like, finishing. You know, they might have some good moments, but, you know, neither one of those guys has proven to, you know, be able to finish when the when the lights are brightest. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, like I said, you got Luka, Kyrie, you got the perfect supporting cast ever since, you know, Jason Kidd inserted Derrick Jones Jr. and Daniel Gafford into the starting lineup in place of Josh Green and Derek Lively. This team has not skipped a beat. It has been humming 16 of their last 18 games, and the only two losses in that span 
Luca sat out a uh, second night of a back to back in OKC. The Mavs still almost beat the Thunder, the fully healthy Thunder, even without Luca. Uh, they only lost by seven in that one. And then the other one was the fifth game of a five game road trip in Golden State, where the Mavs still played amazing defense, but the offense just wasn't there. And that was, you know, probably due to the insane travel conditions because that Golden State game was a makeup game from earlier in the season. So uh, there's, you know, aside from those two games, the Mavs have played pretty much perfect basketball. Uh, they've, they've found a way to win in different ways. You know, they can, uh, they show they can win in a barn burner style game, you know, where they played the Houston Rockets recently and they gave up a hundred and I believe it was 135 points or something like that. And they still ended up winning the game, you know, and that was kind of an outlier thing for the Rockets. They were making shots that they don't normally make. And, you know, the Mavs, they came out and came back from 22 points against the team that was fighting for their postseason life and came back and beat them. And Luke and Kyrie were awesome. And, uh, and then you have other games where they're just like, stoning teams to death with their defense like it's just it's been crazy to see you know how it's unfolded for them and they're the hottest team in the league so i mean (laughs) you look at the last 10 going down the eastern conference you know no team has been better than seven and three in their last 10 and that's the philadelphia 76ers uh and then you look in the west and the Mavs are by far the hottest team in the West at nine and one in their last ten. So uh, I'm excited, y'all. I'm excited. It's been a fun season. You know, I am. You know, it's always fun to look back and see where you started and where you finish, uh, and you know where the Mavs were in early February at 26 and 23, and where they're at now. 20 games over 500 with two games left is just absolutely incredible. You know, it's uh, you got to give credit to Jason Kidd too for making the lineup change and and sticking with it. That's been a big thing. You know, he's been more animated on the sidelines lately, which is something we hadn't really seen from him since that 2022 run. And just overall, from top to bottom, from management to coaching to the players to the fan base. There is a lot of belief in this team that wasn't there previously. Like, this isn't just, you know, okay, 2022 Cinderella run, and then, you know, you're happy that they made it to the Western Conference Finals, but you kind of knew they were going to fizzle out because they didn't have the, the front court depth. It's legit this time. Like, the Mavs could seriously go all the way and win a championship. Now, obviously, they have to go out there and do it, you know, for it to mean anything, but the pieces are there. And, you know, all the hype is warranted. And they've gone out there and proven that that hype is warranted with how they played over their last two months. So uh, very, very excited for it. Uh, Again, I'll be back on here Tuesday next week with my guy, Drew Johnson. We're going to do a deep dive into Mavs Clippers round three. Uh, Get your blood pressure medicine ready. (laughs) Because... It is two of the best clutch teams in the NBA facing off against each other, and we should know more about the uh, the injury stuff for each side, for Kawhi on the Clippers and uh, then Derek Lively for the Mavs. We should have more information by then as well. So, y'all, appreciate it. Be sure to go like, rate, and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Leave us some comments. We want to hear from y'all. You know, give us your takes. Let us know if you agree or disagree with stuff we throw out here on the pod. And, you know, just keep it rolling. It's been an amazing season. I'm glad we've been able to, you know, continue doing this for you guys. We enjoy doing it. We love covering the team. You know, I've been a fan my whole life. I got into the media stuff back in 2017, I think. Uh, you know, I started out with Mavs Fanatic. Now it's Dallas Fanatic. Um, and then went to Mavs Moneyball and then eventually made my made my way over to uh, DallasBasketball.com and started doing this podcast in 2019. And, man, it has just gotten better and better and better with each passing year. 
And I'm glad that the Mavs have finally established themselves as a legitimate title contender because it makes it all makes it all worth it, not just from a fan perspective, but from a media perspective, covering the team every game, writing stuff, podcasting, all that is so much more fun when the team you're covering is is winning as much as the Mavs are right now. So, guys, appreciate it. I hope you have a r- great rest of your day. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time.